All right, we're filming it right now. All right. So what we have over here? So Bear Money software. It's a Bear Money Management Suite 2020 R2, or R1 rather. It comes out in May, R2 will be out uh, in November. Mm -hmm. So when the IT administrator, IT infrastructure team logs in, they're gonna get this uh, dashboard. And we use the stop site stoplight method green is good red is bad so when that job kicks off that could be a patching management job software deployment job inventory job if it's good to go it's going to be green if it fails you're going to get a red error code or you know, a microsoft error message because mm -hmm. we're push technology so when you kick off that job to push out software it's going to give you that active toolbar and then that percentage of completion so like when you're copying a large file you're gonna see how far along that job is, especially when you're patching nights and weekends, you know how far along you're gonna to have to wait. So jobs that you create here, any job you create are reusable. So for example, like a patch job for the August patches, you have it set to deploy Friday night at 10 o'clock and add your September patches, for example. Mm -hmm. Any of the operating systems and managing your network here, we have a built-in vulnerability scanner, so when you're scanning those systems and you're using our built-in vulnerability scanner, it's going to start turning green. Our demo, little demo here is all red because everything's bad. Mm -hmm. But it'll start to turn green as you fix things, patch things, update things, fix certain PLLs, whatever that problem is, or proposed solutions. And then we also have an MDM component, so it shows you compliance stats of your MDMs, iPhone, Android. So in the environment, it's all hyperlinked throughout. We have these static or logical groups. So this is basically the companies. This is our made-up little um, uh, Active Directory here. So those OUs could be anything that based on your LD uh, Active Directory. So with an LDAP sync, we're going to enumerate those machines that are at Active Directory. Right? So in this case, the boss OU you has 30 machines. So we've got Windows. We can inventory and even. Uh, push some software to Max, we can manage Android, iOS. So within the Active Directory, you have information such as the name of the machine, the last logged on user. This we showed, and I never showed this prior to COVID, is the mode of this, for example, laptop or this sort of machine. Mm -hmm. It's in dynamic mode. Well, that means when it's work from home, it's not on the network, it's going to leverage what we call a software gateway to get its patches and apps, even though it's not VPN in. Mm -hmm. It's just on the internet, we can still push software from it via gateway. Nice. But if, if it's in, on a network, be in dynamic mode, it'll skip the gateway and then use the LAN speed to get its updates. Mm. Or for example, these are all set to LAN, and that's what, I never showed this prior to COVID because I didn't think about it. So we actually have that as a, another component of the software. Internet mode, folks that are totally remote, never come to the office, leave it in internet mode. So say Mr. Wakefield's machine here. From the, gonna get that overview from the LDAP sync, one of the machine, last user, registered user for example, the OS it's running, good information here, asset tags, right? Mm -hmm. We have a BitLocker management component to our software. It shows you that this is encrypted. And then we also store the recovery keys for you. And then one of our main modules is inventory. So it's gonna take a look at all the software that's on the machine. Again, green is good, red is bad, demo world, everything needs to be updated. And then we have a WMI call of all the hardware stores. All you infrastructure guys know this better than I do. It's gonna give you the information, processor, motherboard, memory, for example. It's a laptop that you want to add memory to to show if there's any empty slots. Mm -hmm. And then we get into compliance section. This is our vulnerability scan. The demo focus is to show you a lot of items. You're not going to scroll through 680 items. So I yeah. always like yeah. to point out, like, here's a critical vulnerability exposure. We get this list from uh, MIT Research from MITRE. Mm -hmm. And we give you, here's the, the CVE, here's the proposed solution. Now you're back to how do you fix those? And we're all about automating, consolidating, summarizing. You know the 680 items, but here it's by product, right? Vulnerable product. So usual suspects, like Reader, for example, there's even old Flash. So that's what you're fixing. What do you fix it? Um, in software, <laughs> I'm going to show you this use case. This is probably a quick sort of show. I'm going to open up the entire boss value, so across those 30 machines. Now, if we take a look at the inventory as opposed to just the single machine, you're going to see a little bit of an eye chart here, but. Now, to say, for example, look at that. So here it shows how some machines have it, some don't. It's green and red. 
but we right mouse click, it's going to go out to that version, 3.5. And then for our use case example, we click on installed on and see really the red ones, which ones are missing. We create a job and push that out. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the um, way to fix in a CV if it needs one of these. Oh, by the way, managed software. This is the laundry list of third party non Microsoft apps that we provide and package, track, package, and then test and provide as a, as a catalog. Mm -hmm. So that's one way of fixing it. And then the other way, I like to go old school and show the the patch classic. It's really just uh, our repository of the WSUS Microsoft updates. Mm -hmm. and you see them here, right? So we take a look at them with push technology versus like a old Microsoft tools with pull technology. So we can schedule that job, push it out when you need to, nights and weekends. Oh, by the way, if you have some older um, um, systems that are managing older, say, manufacturing devices, we can actually block a patch. So you push it out, it doesn't update it, so it doesn't break it. And, or you need, if it does break something, this is uninstalled, basically rollback. Cool. So those are your Microsoft patches, your third-party patches I'll show you from inventory. And we're jobs based. This is where all the work is done, right? Let's get into a job. So let's stick with the security patch theme. It's all wizard-based. Job for Windows device. It's a... Yeah, almost September or October, September. You want to tell it's over yet? Yeah, so patches for September. Different ways of pushing that job out. Active would be good for somebody contacts help desk. They need something right away. So Adobe Reader, set it to active. It's going to push out right away. Mm -hmm. Or for our job here, patch Tuesday, wake on land, nights and weekends. Wake it up, patch it, shut it down. Passive, you're going to get its job, its application, its scheduled time. Mm -hmm. uh, shutdown's a good one for like a larger patch, a service pack, so you can set it to shutdown. Instead of logged, logged off, left on, you shut it down and the job will pick up. So it's a good one. So we wizard through this. There's a different option. Validity is a good one for um, what we call maintenance windows. So, say you want to push patches to, I don't know, your exchange server. You uh, Between, you know, after the six, the, the exchange we only got to push between seven and midnight. Mm -hmm. Right? Again, more scheduling options. Yeah, yeah. We have that. Now we get into the actual jobs. This is like deploying software for our use case. We're going to go into manage patches. I like to use a classic because it really shows you the flexibility of our solution versus other ones. Because mm -hmm. now you're getting into you can schedule it nights and weekends. Oh, by the way, it's a zero day exploit. You want to just push out MS10 for one single patch. Mm -hmm. Or you have a process in place, patch Tuesday, second Tuesday of the month. You're going to get the patches. What do you do? You review them. Which ones do we not need? Which ones break things? So you can deselect, right? I don't need that, I don't need that. Again, I'd like to show this because just the, the flexibility you have. All patches, single patch, schedule it. And we're in here. Oh, by the way, we're, we did the Microsoft. While we're in here, let's add to the job. And we can do the managed software like the Dermo need term for the non-Microsoft patches. Inventory update those. You can pick Flash, .NET, Firefox, whatever you need. Add it to the patch job. And then I like to go and show the IT um, folks the prefaces of this job. It shows more scheduling options. Mm -hmm. We saw maintenance windows. This is the patch use case here. We want to kick this thing off, say, I don't know, it's here. Start time. Maybe 9.20 So this patch truck's going to kick off every Friday at 9.20. So that you have that schedule, that's that routine. And this is a good one for zero day exports. Here's why. This is where insert joke here. Can delay job. Meaning, mm -hmm. what do we all do as human nature? The little nag screen comes up here where the agent is. Yep. And you're going to give them that. Every 30 minutes, they're going to be told, hey, by the way, zero day, we're going to patch. Tonight, that will let delay job for I say three hours, many minutes. But tonight, at 8:20, it's going to kick off. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's a way of giving them some control, save your work, but we're going to push out the patch because we're here with the expert. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a little job. If we go back to our jobs. 
director here. And you kind of keep the job. And it's simple as just assigning it to, to our active director structure here. And then we, uh, I just click on the same oh, boss no you that's 30 machines. Patch all 30. Mm -hmm. Or again, flexibility. Show folks, my embedded script, doing old school support, the DB script, the base PowerShell. Yep. And then we get into our use case, what we call GUI action or record mode. Mm -hmm. So, what we're doing is recording that setup with the right mouse click. So, we're really, it's not an, a macro, so we're recording the action behind a button via the clicks, right? And we're writing the script that way. With me. Oh, there we go. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get really niggly as in we you know we don't want it to launch so you can get rid of the check. I was like to show that. Yep. And then finally, uh, So now we wrote a little script. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's the analyzer here. So there's a script. So you need to make changes and go back here and add the check if you want to. You don't have to record it. Yep. And then we can test it. So this is really cool to really get a, a good visual out of this where we can go and launch the process here. Grab a little executable while we're in here. Distribution point to dip. Applications. Yeah, so five bucks. Five bucks. 
so. And then we can actually hit the buttons and it's gonna run. Well, yeah. Yep. So that's what we do, automate routine tasks, schedule, uh, you know. So now we got this into our system. Now we can just finish installing that here, right? Just like we did with tree size. Now we can assign Mozilla to any of the machines that need it. Firefox, right? That was pretty easy to create. It wasn't so bad. No. Right? Very easy. Really easy, really linear interface. A lot of wizards, a lot of automation, a lot of good scheduling. Mm -hmm. all, all in one. Here's the... Um, the management bar here is the job, there's the environment, that's that third party software. We have a, even a built in OS install manager. So if you need to upgrade the Windows 11, uh, we, we, we recognize those drivers for you. That's a tough thing. Mm -hmm. Driver database on the hardware side. Yep. And the coolest thing we've done in our last release in 2020, R2, is this OS customization tool. So by the matter of clicks, you can add or delete. You know different features what you need or what you don't need you can see here you got rid of all the xbox stuff you got rid of all the blow <laughs> you don't need that on a you know business owned machine you can patch it you can you know, get rid of cortana get rid of bing search right and then you save that image mm -hmm. so then you're patching it you're pushing out the image that's what we're all about manage that system create a grade we even leverage autopilot, so if you buy something from, let's say, Best Buy or Amazon, somebody at home plugs it in, it's going to phone to the mothership, to Microsoft, but if we have that machine in our bare money server, it's going to come to us, and then that job will kick off, so kind of that touchless install. Cool, cool. It's us, man. Cool. Bare money, bare money management suite, 2022 R1, gives a shout. All right. Demo, and we have uh, free, fully functional uh, trial licenses. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.